A good Friday early evening to you. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota Twin City Subaru, 802 Honda. They're all located off of exit 7 on Interstate 89. Well, we have Jose. It's been spinning around and doing loop-de-loops. It's looping over its same water that it's churned up, so it's losing a little bit of its... Uh, some of the uh, core water temperatures here are probably a little bit lower, and uh, you have to have the uh, sea surface temperatures to be above about 80, 81 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit, so there could be an issue here, and that's why um, Jose is now a tropical storm system. However, it is forecast to take a track and then up the eastern seaboard, and then get up into this position here and mostly turn to the right. It's something we'll have to watch. This would be the middle of next week, so any kind of a threat really is along the uh, really north of the Middle Atlantic, perhaps Cape Hatteras, but generally in the northeast uh, capes, Cape Cod and certainly uh, Canadian Maritimes with uh, Jose and what it's going to do. Some computer models loop it back around yet again. This is sea surface temperatures in the western Atlantic and you can see where Jose is right now based off uh, in this area here and these water temperatures look to be sufficiently warm but uh, even a lowering may not be affecting it but it is a tropical storm force at this point and again, it'll take a track off the eastern seaboard, east of Cape Hatteras and west of Bermuda, and uh, in a, into a position here where it's going to be over cooler waters. Sea surface temperature anomaly shown here, and this is the Gulf Stream above normal, right in the vicinity of New England. There is a little bit of a cold area here, and this may help to weaken the remnants of what would be likely tropical storm Jose, maybe a hurricane at Category 1 level up to, to the east of Cape Hatteras. Here's the Friday 5 p.m. advisory on Jose. Uh, it'll be hurricane force is what they're expecting at Category 1 level and then continuing as a Category 1 up through here and then not too far from uh, the benchmark here, 40 north, 70 west, taking a track and perhaps looping. We'll, we'll have to worry about that at a later date. However, the threat is in this area here. I don't see a threat for Vermont at this time. It's something we'll have to keep a close eye on, however, uh, with any kind of curveballs that it may be a little bit closer to the coast and then sneak up the coast like that. And this is looking at the European model. We can see where Jose goes here. Uh, this is about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. We'll just jump a little further ahead here. This is uh, 8 o'clock in the morning Monday. At 96 hours, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So you can see it's moved up into this position, still holding a lot of strength here, very low pressure, and some precipitation perhaps spreading into southern parts of Vermont. That would be, again, 8 o'clock on Wednesday. And this last panel is 8 o'clock on Thursday morning, a little bit of an expansion, probably extra tropical at this point. Again, this is the European model. Some of the uh, computer hurricane computer models uh, have tightened this up considerably, so we have pretty good confidence a northwest uh, track, and then it turns just about due north or maybe north northeast, gets in the vicinity, and then begins to pull away and push out to sea. Hurricane Jose intensity uh, forecast uh, models uh, projections anyway, and you can see a definite loss here at about between 84 and 96 hours. This would put it basically off the coast of uh, the Delmarva Peninsula, somewhere in this area here, there's a lot of agreement that it's going to get into colder waters and lose hurricane intensity and go back down to a tropical storm. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.